everybody and welcome back. Uh, this is now part four of our Revel Corvette build. Uh, in the last video you'll remember if you saw that one that I eventually got the hull painted uh, and just to follow on from that early on in this video I'm going to paint the decks just so that the hull's uh, finished in terms of painting uh, and you can see that I've spent some time this morning just going around and masking off uh, the bulkheads and around the sides of the ship ready to do that uh, deck painting. So that's the first thing I'm going to do and then now that the paint on the whole sides has had plenty of time to dry uh, it's about 36 hours since I painted that I can also fit the pennant number decals uh, and the depth marker decals as well onto the ship. I'll just give that another coat of uh, gloss varnish just over the top to seal the decals in and then the hull can go uh, to one side for a little while uh, whilst I get on with the rest of the build. And for the rest of this video I'm going to make a start on the superstructure with the lower part of the bridge. Uh, most of it is built from Pontos etched brass so it'll be the first chance we get to have a real good look at the Pontos brass parts. So that'll be coming up later on, but first of all, let's get this hull finished off, then we can put it to one side uh, and get on with the rest of the build. Okay, so uh, we can paint the decks. You can see that I've gone round with masking tape and masked off the bulkheads and the sides of the ship. Uh, just one thing that I've used here, uh, the tape here, this white tape around the back, is Tamiya's relatively new flexible it's kind of a vinyl tape and that just allows you to uh, mold it around this curve at the back of the hull. So that's quite a useful uh, tape to use. I've not gone all the way around because the standard uh, yellow tape from Tamiya has done the job there but it wouldn't have gone around this quite tight radius here. So that vinyl tape is quite useful for applications like that. Uh, and it's worth being careful masking up. I don't want to be doing too many touch-ups and stuff with this. You'll notice that I've masked up around the edges here, uh, which you might wonder whether or not that's necessary because you could just aim the paint flow uh, in this direction away from the uh, ship's side. But what can happen is that as the uh, airflow goes over the side of a surface like this, it can swirl around. So you get a circular motion of the paint and eddies, and it can create a slight misting effect on this surface here, even though you're not aiming the paint directly at it. So it's worth just sealing around the edge as I've done here, and then it completely eliminates that potential problem. It's just worth the time doing that to, to avoid any damage to that paint finish. So we're all ready uh, to do the painting. We'll get the paint mixed up. We're going to be using Tamiya's uh, lacquer paint again. So I'll be doing the decks in a dark grey, so I'll use the German grey from the lacquer range. Okay, so that's uh, the decks done. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to have to uh, put some shading up against the window uh, because obviously you can see the sunlight streaming in. It's great for modelling, but uh, not so good for filming. So I'll have to do something about that before we go any further. Okay, so that's the sunshine blocked out. Get a better view of this now. So you can see that German grey is dried nice and smooth. There will be a little bit more work to do. There are walkways uh, along the sides of the ship, which I'm assuming was some sort of uh, anti-slip material. And I'm just going to pick those out 
uh, in a slightly darker colour to this German grey. Uh, but I can do that any time, I can do that later on. The next job I want to do just to get this hull out of the way is to get the pennant numbers on. So I've got the decal sheet ready to go. Uh, you remember that uh, in part three I photocopied the decal sheet so that I could use some paper copies of the pennant numbers to line up the camouflage scheme. So hopefully I'll be able to position this decal uh, in exactly the right place and I used uh, some reference photographs for positioning uh, of the camouflage relative to the pennant number. So hopefully that will work. Uh, I'm just going to use some microset and microsol if I need to for the Revel decals. Usually they respond pretty well to those solutions. Uh, and I always put them in something to support them because the number of times that uh, I've knocked these over and spilled half a bottle of setting solution I've lost count of them and I'm sure there's plenty of people watching that have done exactly the same thing so this just keeps them a bit more secure so I'll cut the first number out and get it applied that water was a bit hot so I've just decanted some so it'll cool down a bit Okay. So I've just used the reference photograph here to position this decal uh, and because I used a photocopy to set the camouflage scheme up I've got a replica of the photograph or more or less anyway it's pretty close. Okay, I think that's setting up all right. That's gone on uh, pretty nice. The Revel decals are quite matte think I've got all the air out of that they don't can't see any silver in anyway I will just give the decal a tiny little bit of microsol just to make sure that it's going to settle down okay so wherever we've used microsol I'll just leave that alone for a bit just to make sure that I don't damage it at all. The Microsol obviously softens the decal so it is prone to tearing at this stage so I'll just leave it alone. Uh, in the meantime I'll put the first of the draft marks here on the bow. So uh, you'll notice that the draft marks which are here are printed in black so obviously they won't show against the black undersides that I've painted the model with. Uh, the Revel instructions call out for a red underside so the black would show on the red underside. But obviously I've done mine in black. Uh, sometimes what happened was that the uh, surfaces above the waterline would be in black and then they would transition to white on the underside dark colour where a ship was painted in black or dark grey uh, or across a boot topping sometimes a black boot topping the uh, draft marks were picked out in white. Now I've looked at my reference photographs and I can't see any evidence of any white draft marks on the waterline. So what I'm assuming is that the ship may have had a lighter colour underside uh, with black draft marks all the way down uh, but when 
she was repainted as I believe she was uh, that the uh, draft marks weren't reapplied in the white colour. So in other words they stopped at the uh, waterline. So that's what I'm going to replicate. I'll just take the draft marks down to the waterline and leave the rest. Just checking that that decal's alright. It's very tempting to go in uh, with a brush and try and straighten it out but uh, it's best to avoid doing that. So I'll occupy myself with something else. I'm just going to check one of my references because I've got a good photograph head on of the bow and I ought to be able to pick out the uh, positioning of the draft marks to see which marking was at the waterline so I'll just check that before I apply that. So I'll just get that in the right position now just using the references. And just coming back to the main pennant number, that settled down nicely into all the detail. Well, I say all the detail, there's just a couple of panel lines to sit into. So uh, that's gone on nicely. Nice result. Once these have had time to dry, I'll give them another coat of gloss varnish just to seal them in. But so far so good, we can do the other side now. Okay, so that's the whole uh, completed with the decals on. So we've got the uh, two draft marks, port and starboard, and the pennant number on the stern as well, and the ones on the front of the ship. So uh, they've actually come out pretty well. The Revel decals have gone on really nicely. You can see how they've conformed there to the shape of the uh, plating on the hull. So I'll put this to one side for two or three days to fully dry uh, and then uh, I'll leave that gloss coat on until nearer the end of the build and I'll just give it its final finishing coat of varnish uh, much later on. The reason for that is that the gloss varnish will just protect the hull from any little chips and uh, damage. In the meantime we'll get on get the parts out that we need to start the bridge structure. Okay so uh, with the bridge structure we'll be using mainly the Pontos instructions and this is page three of those. We have here in true Pontos style uh, for the bridge assembly we've got an exploded view of the parts that we're going to require and then gradually a sequence of assembly which takes us through the building of the bridge. Here we've got three revel parts that we need to cut off uh, and they will need some preparation. We've got to trim them a little bit uh, in order for the etch brass parts to fit. So I want to just get to the point where we've built the bridge base as I call it. I'm not going to have time this week to do the whole assembly with all the various guns and uh, bridge uh, equipment on it. So as long as I can get the main structure done I'll be happy for this week. The first thing to do is to get the revel parts that we need. One's already broken off the sprue. But we're going to need this part and this part, so that's uh, D70 and 104. And I think later on in the process we're going to need these two parts as well for the bridge sides. But I'll just check on that, we'll come back if we need them. So the first thing to do is to get the revel parts off. I'll just keep the sprue out because I think we might need these parts as well. So we've got material to remove from uh, both sides of this main platform. So uh, that's the first thing that I'll tackle. So this is just as you would do for any kit, just cleaning up the sprue gates. We've got some ejector pins on the underside of this uh, bridge base. Well, they're 
bottom deck anyway. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. I don't think we're going to see those, so I'll leave them. The ones on this uh, assembler here, which is a bulkhead that goes inside the bridge, they might be visible through the window, so I'll get rid of those ejector pins. You'd have to look really closely to see these, but it only takes a minute to remove them. It's just the sort of thing that an IPMS judge would pick up with their flashlights and quickly demote you into second place because of a couple of ejector pins on an internal bulkhead. So don't take any chances, get rid of them. We need to remove these two locator tabs. So uh, that's all the prep we need to do to that part. And that bulkhead fits in there like that. So <laughs> I'll put that in place now. I think that will act as a reference for where the etch brass parts go later on. So we'll get it in place and it's got time to set up then. So this is the main bridge uh, platform with a couple of raised elements to it. And these are the mountings for the two Ehrlichans that uh, fitted onto the bridge. These mouldings here at the base of the Ehrlichans apparently was designed to catch the ejected uh, shell casings. I suppose it prevented them from falling all over the bridge and people sliding on them and tripping up on them. So uh, that's the purpose of those. And they have a peculiar name that I can't remember now. It begins with Z, I think. Uh, so I'll have to look that up. So there's quite a bit to do with this deck. We have various bits of moulding to remove. The pins for the early bases need to come off. So again, just using the chisel blade. This is really good for getting these parts removed and getting the moulding flat again. Pontos do provide a wooden deck for the bridge but I don't think that from my reference photographs it doesn't appear that there was a wooden deck on the bridge. So I'd like to fit the wooden deck but I'm going to have to go with the references and just paint the platform in the dark grey that I've done the rest of the deck in. Which is a shame really. I've just gouged that a little bit. I've gone too far so I'm going to have to fill that. I was just a bit careless with that. We have this little step to remove as well. So again the chisel blade will take care of that. It also gives a nice square edge. Just finish that off, square it up with a square file. I'll just fill that gouge that I've made. And I think the best thing to do will be to use some CA on it. Although not that much. I'll just put a squirt of accelerator on that, set it up. I think what I'll also do here is fill these holes on the deck, or at least these outboard ones. These will be for the railings uh, and I can drill them again when I've uh, got the Pontos parts in the right position. And with the accelerator on I can sand it straight off. I just need to get right to the bottom of these pins just to grind them off. I can't get a knife in there obviously so I'm just going to have to use a burr to just grind them away a little bit. 
So just a round burr in the motor tool. Just as long as that's flush, that's all we need. Uh, the pedestal base of the Ehrlichan gun will cover the scar up. So I don't need to fuss too much, but it's got to be level. Okay, so that's the upper side modified according to the Pontos instructions. Remo we've uh, removed all the raised detail that we need to. Uh, got the pins out of the uh, Ehrlichan bases and just trimmed off this little step at the side. So that's the top side done. On the underside we've got a whole new brass uh, plate deck head to fit on this. So all this raised detail needs to come off the underside. Now because I'm not too worried about the finish on this, uh, in that there's the brass piece to cover it all up, I'm going to grind off the material with the motor tool. I've got the burr already in. So I might as well carry on using that and get rid of all this raised detail that I don't want. Move that out a little bit with a curved knife blade. Okay, so that's the upper part of the bridge prepared. It's nice and smooth on the underside. And we've got all the detail off that we need from the top of the bridge platform. So that's ready to use now. The part that we put together earlier on as set up. It's nice and firm. So again that's something else we can use. So there are the two Revel parts all prepared, ready to accept the brass from the Pontos set. So the next step is to get the brass out and let's see what we need to do with it to start assembling the bulkheads for the lower part of the bridge. So uh, as I mentioned earlier the Pontos instructions standard give us the parts that we need. So there are these four main bulkhead parts and a couple of doors and the rails for the doors I think that's what they are. So obviously we're going to have to join these together. So what I'll be doing probably is to cut them out and shape them then tape them together and then I'll solder the joins on the inside just to get a nice strong assembly. So that's the first thing to do is to make this basically what is a box uh, on the inside. So this is the fret that we need, fret 2 in the Pontos set. So the main element of the uh, bridge that we need is this one. Now mine has got a little bit bent and you might remember that a while ago I was waiting for replacements for this uh, Pontos set because the frets that were supplied were bent. They'd been loose in the box and were banging up and down on the inside of the box uh, and were damaged. So eventually I got them replaced and this is one of the frets that I have two of. So what I'm going to do is pick the best from the two frets. So this first part that I want, this long section here has been bent here. So it's kinked. So I'll use the better of the two, which is this one. One of the nice things about Pontos etch brass is that the connecting uh, stubs, if you like, on these etch parts are very, very small. So they don't really take an awful lot of cleaning up. And some of them are so tiny sometimes that it's hard to see where the connections are. Okay, the first thing to look at is this uh, deckhead part here. 
in the Pontos set and that goes on the underside of the uh, bridge deck that we cleared earlier on and there's one or two things just to be aware of with this uh, and that is that when we fit this in the correct position uh, we have this piece here, this piece of plastic exposed and what we have to do later on when this is glued on is trim that back so in other words the revel part is too deep. Uh, the other issue that this part corrects is the position of the gangway. So Revel have it here and Pontos have moved the gangway to this position here. So when again when this is in position when this is glued uh, we can cut the gangway out in its correct place. The slight difficulty with that is that the uh, Revel gangway here would normally be covered up by the wooden deck uh, but because we're not fitting the wooden deck I'm just going to be painting this in a dark grey colour I'm going to have to fill that gap in. The other thing that this brass part does or should do is extend this little bridge wing backwards and it does that by providing this piece of uh, brass which is meant to be folded over and laid down to give us a square extension to the deck at the back so something like that and again that would be covered up by the wooden deck uh, now I've tried to fold that and it's very difficult to get a neat uh, result with it so what I've done is broken the extension piece or at least the part that folds back on itself I've broken that away and I'm just going to add a piece of styrene strip to the top of the brass part here just to extend the plastic backwards and doing that will enable me to get a neater uh, seamless finish it would be very difficult to do it with this brass piece uh, so that's no good for me. I'll put a piece of styrene in here, sand it down flush, uh, fill it until it's uh, nice and clean, check it with some primer and then hopefully we'll get a better result than using the brass. But the first thing I'm going to do before anything else is get this part glued down. And one thing I learned about gluing large uh, brass pieces like this to plastic is that CA glue or super glue doesn't work and that's because the brass uh, expands in atmospheric temperature at different rates to the plastic and that causes it to buckle and kink and pull away from uh, the super glued surface and I found that to my cost when I was fitting the rear screens to my hood uh, they're large parts a little bit bigger than this admittedly but they're large parts which I initially super glued in place and what I found after a couple of weeks was that they started to pop off as the brass expanded and contracted. So I'm not going to make that same mistake again and this is going to be glued in position with some two part epoxy glue. Uh, it's a five minute epoxy that I've got but what I'll do is I'll glue that up today. Uh, and leave it overnight so I get a really good solid bond and clamp it up uh, and then that should be good to go and it's not going to move once that's uh, done. So that's the first job, we'll get this uh, epoxy glue uh, mixed up and we'll get this uh, deck head fitted. So as I said this is a two part glue so the glue and the hardener that are mixed in equal quantities so we'll make sure that's properly mixed together. We've probably got uh, two or three minutes before this starts to go off. The downside of it is that I find it quite messy, it's difficult to uh, use without getting it all over the place. So uh, you probably just need to give it a clean up as well. Uh, 
and I want to make sure that all the surface is covered. So I'll uh, get that lined up. If we've got any excess anywhere, uh, it's fairly easily scraped off. Okay, so as I said, all the, though this is five minute epoxy, I'm going to leave that uh, overnight just to make sure that it's completely set to tidy up around the inside because the new lower bridge bulkheads fit into this square. So I don't want any glue obstructing that fit. Okay, that looks good. It's nicely positioned, so put that to one side uh, until tomorrow. Okay, so while the uh, deck and deck head are drying, I'll form this main uh, bridge cabin part. And it's just uh, a simple box really. So uh, what I'll need to do is form that up into the box and then I'll be soldering the junction uh, in one of the corners. Uh, I always solder stuff like this now because it's just a lot stronger, but there is an alternative if you don't like soldering uh, or you're not able to uh, solder. Uh, and that's just to use some styrene strip, probably two millimeter square styrene strip, put it into the corner and that helps to glue uh, with CA, it helps to glue the uh, corner together. And I did that uh, with the hood build before I really uh, got used to soldering. And it worked okay, it was uh, not too bad, but soldering's definitely a better option if you're able to do it, if you've got the uh, equipment. So the first thing I'll do is fold this cabin together. And just one thing here, when we're folding this section, we've got these very th uh, thin pieces of brass here which form the door uh, opening. Uh, and it's just uh, a way to bend this. If we try to hold the thicker part and bend this, it's likely that the brass would want to bend here at this very thin uh, junction of the bottom of the door and the top. So the best way to do it is to pin the uh, weak part of the brass so that's locked in the pliers and then bend the thicker part and that way the weak part of the brass goes with the pliers. So it's just uh, a tip to avoid deforming thin pieces of brass like this. And I use these bending pliers exclusively now really. I very rarely use my uh, bending tool which is this. This is very old and it's a very hard plastic. The more modern ones are uh, machined aluminium I think so they're probably a lot better than this now but uh, I very rarely use this unless I've got an extremely long bend which I can use the back of the tool for so that gathers dust on the shelf most of the time but these but these pliers are really excellent these are Tamiya's bending pliers for photo etch and what I'm trying to do here is just get uh, a rough square shape and you can actually use the cutting mat to just check whether or not you're approaching the right angles. What you don't want to do with brass is uh, overbend it, bend it back and 
and flex it basically because it'll snap in the end uh, and if this snaps you're just making a lot more work for yourself so that will come together into a nice uh, box so just a little piece of tape on the join so the first thing to do is uh, put some flux on the junction and I'll just cut some small pieces of solder off and can position that into the corner where we want to solder so that'll be plenty for that might even be a bit too much okay so we're up to temperature I'm just heating the brass next to the solder pellet. And can remove the tape. And that's a nice uh, solid join. That's nice and square. So that's the uh, cabin formed. You can see the solder on the corner there. I probably used a fraction too much solder in there but uh, it's not too bad. The Pontos set also has these inner bulkhead walls which fit like this. I'm not sure why we've got these really. Um, I suppose they add a little bit of strength and to fix these in place again I'll solder them but in this case, I'll just put some flux on the faces that we're joining. So like that, then position the part inside and get it lined up. I want to make sure the windows are aligned properly. So uh, with that positioned properly, the windows are lined up. In this case, what I'm going to do is just apply some solder just along the edge, really. And because we've got some flux on the inside face, you just get a little bit of the solder wicking down and securing the parts. So this, just to stress, this is my way of uh, putting these together. And there's possibly, in fact, probably better ways of doing it. Uh, but I find this works for me and it does add quite a bit of stiffness uh, to the part. We need to just tidy up the top and that's done. We've got another two of those to do on the other uh, forward wall and the other side wall. There's just one more thing we have to do and that's sort the doors out. So uh, Pontos provides some new doors which are these and on the flower class these were actually sliding doors so they move back like that along the bulkhead on some rails and Pontos provide those rails in the etch brass set so uh, jumping ahead I've fitted one of those rails to the starboard side here so it's basically just a piece of brass which is bent into three, a three sided box and then that's soldered onto the uh, side of the bulkhead. Uh, now soldering brass like this, these very thin parts, is obviously a lot more uh, difficult than uh, just soldering the bulkhead together. Let's cut the rails off. It's just basically these very thin strips of brass. It's probably just less than a millimetre. So that's uh, what we need to be fitting and as I said it bends into a u-shape uh, Pontos provide us with some bend marks fortunately put 
to try and get those corners to as close to 90 degrees as we can and it sits on the side of the cabin so the really difficult part with this is to uh, make sure that the piece of brass that we're trying to solder doesn't move so I'll put some flux on the cabin so let's just see if we can get that tacked As you can see it's uh, pretty tricky to hold on to it okay so I've managed to get that tacked at the front so it's not soldered all the way along yet can do the bottom of the rail now this is one of the uh, trickier Pontos parts just because it's so thin really so it won't all be like this thank goodness so you can see with the uh, delicacy of the brass parts that you really need one of these fine tips on the iron and then once everything is tacked it's a bit easier then to go around and uh, finish all the joints off so get some more heat into the brass it's hard to see that rail it's pretty small really but it just does add a tiny little bit of detail okay so just a quick test fit of these parts now at this stage so the cabin we've just built sits on the uh, bottom platform like that and one thing that I've noticed is that the revel plastic here doesn't actually meet the bulkhead so there's about a millimeter gap on either side uh, I'll probably fill the starboard side one with a bit of styrene strip uh, but I can get away with the port side because uh, on the port side I'm going to fit the door in a closed position like that so it'll just hide that gap that we've got inside so that'll be uh, so that'll be the port side door on the starboard just for a bit of variety I'm going to open it up so it'll be positioned kind of halfway like that as though it's just opened just for a bit of variety really now because I'm going to have that open I'm not going to be able to fit this starboard door because it's going to need glazing with some acetate and obviously I'm not going to be able to get in if I fixed it in that position so we'll do that separately and then attach it once it's all glazed uh, on the port side I can fix this door in position because I can get behind and do the glazing on it without any problem I've just taken a look at the revel instructions and we are going to need these bulkheads here and uh, we'll just take a look at how those fit in a moment I'll just clean them up okay so these parts eventually uh, will go just outboard of the cabin and they'll form a kind of little corridor down the side of the cabin I just want to drill out the holes the Revel parts have got little pins on top but obviously the epoxy has filled those in so I'll drill those out and then they can accept uh, these parts So they uh, fit alongside so you can see there that we've got this corridor effect going down the side of that cabin and I'm just thinking about the painting uh, sequence and I think just for some strength 
I'm going to glue those in position. So Revel give us a couple of location tabs. <laughs> so with that uh, roughly glued together and just before it completely sets, I'll just position that in place on the top platform just like that. Obviously we haven't got the cabin inside at this stage. I'm just doing that so that I make sure that uh, these side bulkheads are vertical and they're going to eventually go into the holes that we've just drilled out <laughs> like that. So now that I know that those bulkheads are vertical I can just leave that to dry and then when we disassemble it uh, I'll know that everything's in the right position and those uh, pillars are going to fit into the holes that we've just drilled out. So the next thing I want to do is the bridge uh, front on the upper platform. So that's this section here and you can see that it's got a lot of the bridge equipment on the back of it. So we'll cut the parts out for the bridge front and we'll get those assembled. Again I think we'll be soldering a lot of this together. Okay so we'll start with this uh, major part. This forms uh, the majority of this uh, front shield and uh, it really pays to work out how we're going to bend this because it'd be very easy to fold it up and find that you've locked yourself out making one of the other bends. So there's a definite sequence uh, to doing this. The first one that I want to do is this bend here at the top with these little arms on. They will actually form the top of the splinter shield. So it's a little flange along the top of the splinter shield. And if you look at the shape of the part here, when we fold this up we've got this panel here which goes on a slight rise and then the top panel that I've just been talking about with the flanges uh, lies along the top of the side shield here. So that's a very gentle bend in both cases but I'll do them now because if I folded these up through 90 degrees these side pieces what would happen is I wouldn't be able to get in to make these two bends here. So I want to do those first. And again we've got this very narrow strip of brass here. So I'm going to have to isolate that in the pliers so that I can just make that very gentle bend. And then this top piece needs to come horizontal again. So something like that and that should conform similarly to this side piece here I hope. So with the top done uh, as a guess as to where it's going to need to be I'll fold these back. These go right the way back on top of themselves so through 180 degrees the same on this side. So you can see there's a definite sequence to doing this. And now we can bring the sides up to meet the top section. You can see that I haven't quite bent this top panel enough. But uh, before I put the other side through uh, 90 degrees. I'll just make that adjustment to that bend and also get the top with the flanges at the right angle as well. So you can see there it's come together at the correct angle. So I've gone back to the standard tip now. This is a much bigger part obviously so it will be fine to use a bigger tip. So we've got the angle there 
and the little flange at the top is just standing off by an equal amount all the way along. So just repeat that for the other side. So uh, this panel fits inside now. So there we are, it's come out all right. The hard thing to do I suppose is to get the assembly square and tight because especially after I'd soldered uh, the sides up I was left with little bits of solder that was just obstructing the fit of this front panel a little bit. So I just after a bit of clean up that's gone in all right now. So we've got these uh, pieces of machinery and mechanism gauges on them. So they're a nice little bit of detail but what I'm going to do is paint those separately uh, and do some detail painting of the gauges and so on and then I'll just attach these afterwards uh, once I've painted this whole structure I'll attach these afterwards with some uh, PVA just so we get a bit of relief detail I think if I glued those on now and primed them and paint them we'd lose the sharpness of that detail that are provided in the Pontos set I think these uh, doors here, I'll display them slightly open. Just add a little nice detail to that, I think. This uh, window surround can be glued on. I won't bother soldering that, I don't think. OK, so that's the front housing of the upper bridge. So that's the basic construction of the bridge completed. There's obviously an awful lot of detail to go on before the bridge is finished. I'll give it a good clean up, all these parts, uh, get them in some primer, then we can have a look what they all look like uh, back on the ship. So uh, that assembly goes together reasonably well. I just need to do a little bit of adjustment to get this uh, side bulkhead uh, to fit neatly up to the underside of the upper bridge platform but uh, overall it's pretty good and to finish this assembly although I'm not going to be fitting these yet we have these very characteristic side frames uh, on the flower class and these replace the very heavy items in the Revel kit so the last thing to do with this platform before I prime it is just to sort out these uh, gaps because I'm not fitting the wooden deck and to put the uh, extension piece on the back here uh, and trim this section off here. So we'll do all that remedial work then uh, prime the part. So I haven't got the uh, exactly the correct size strip to do this job so I'm going to have to cobble something together but uh, it'll work just as good and I'll super glue these strips into place So while that's drying I'll fill this redundant gangway. So this is uh, dried, I'll get it sanded down now. Obviously we've got the brass to give us a guide. So I'll just sand it flush with the brass. So I want to get a seamless join on this extension. So. I'll use some Mr. Surfacer just to test the join. Okay, so uh, I think that's everything done. So uh, we've trimmed back the platform here, extended the platform here, 
uh, filled the old uh, gangway and created a new one in the correct position. So I think that is ready for some primer. So they're all done, the basic components there for the uh, bridge structure. I'll just go over to the model now and we'll take a look at what they look like actually on the ship and just make sure that they fit okay. Okay, back at the ship and you can see that I've just test fitted the bridge assembly that we've just uh, constructed over at the bench. And these are just for illustration really, these are the very characteristic side braces uh, and supporting pillars for the bridge wings which are very characteristic of the flower class. So as you can see there's still plenty of work to be done on this bridge. Uh, the main elements are the splinter shields which go around the sides and various other shields uh, and bulkheads around the back of the bridge. We have the radar tower which fits to this platform uh, extension at the back of the bridge platform. The bridge equipment itself needs to be fitted. We have some wooden deck on the lower platform and various steps and so on. So quite a bit more detail uh, to fit to that. Okay, so there we are, all done for this week. We've managed to get the uh, main elements of the bridge structure sorted out uh, and finished off the hull painting as well. So quite a bit of progress there. So in part five, uh, before I add any more detail to the bridge that we've built this week, I want to build the other deck houses. So there are the funnel base and a large deck house which goes amidships and aft. Uh, so we'll be doing those in the next video. There's not quite as much brass work to do next week. We use more of the Revel kit, so it might be a bit simpler. We might be able to make uh, some better progress next week. So that'll be coming up as usual next Friday. Uh, over the weekend, I'm going to be doing some more work returning to the Vulcan. Now that I've got a compressor uh, back working, uh, I can finish the painting off. I was interrupted I just managed to get the undersurfaces of the Vulcan painted, uh, but over the weekend I'll get the upper surfaces masked off and the top camouflage done. Uh, and I'll post that progress uh, in part eight, I think it will be, of the Vulcan build uh, over the weekend, either Sunday or maybe running into Monday. So that's it for this one. I hope uh, you can join me for either the Vulcan or Corvette build or maybe even both. Uh, over the next few days. In the meantime, look after yourselves everybody, stay safe, enjoy your modelling uh, and I'll see you in another few days time. Bye for now.